is the column of from Gino University. And uh, today I want to, uh, on behalf of my team member, you see a lot of team members. And uh, as a presenter, I have a privilege. You see the name is uh, alphabetically in the last name. But uh, with my last name is W, it should be the last one. But I have a privilege to put my name in the first one. So uh, today my talk it will be a uh, scientific research uh, investigation. Uh, and the monitoring result of land time potential uh, land slide. And the vision of the uh, study, we like to pause a method to uh, see the potential or risk of a potential last scale land slide. And the present, we are now integrate analysis of a couple or a lot of techniques to land slide monitor as a demonstration slide to other last scale land slide. In the future, we like to uh, detect the land slide precursors with apex technologies. So if you see this uh, this uh, theme we use this in this slide, we use the uh, very high in INSA and also uh, to historic images and also the US and we have a US LIDAR in this slide, very good performance. And uh, with the GPS labeling and uh, the ground surface detection, earthquake stations and underground deformation uh, detection. And for the historic images we can see that in nineteen uh, 60. It's a uh, corona is just declassified from the United States. So you see uh, very uh, clear uh, images of this time, but uh, not so tremendous last time we, we are seeing in, in this area. And then we go to, let's say, in 1970s, it's the poor image quality with 90, uh, 90 uh, feet resolution. And go to the 1980s, the aerial photo by uh, Taiwan, you can see that the, the last time is already here. We can see this one, and also go to 1984, the poor satellite images. If we go back to see the Lantai area located in northeastern Taiwan, it was a forest. Uh, it was designed for forest uh, industry. So there's a lot of uh, forest uh, uh, trees. They need to move down to uh, to the down down slope. So we can see there's an old road here, and this one is taken by trolls. You can see there's old road. Uh, but this road is already abandoned. We cannot use the road again anymore. So when they transfer to forestry education, a lot of tourists will pass this very uh, heavy traffic uh, road. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of important but because the tourists will go there. But there's another another way. If the typhoon uh, not work, typhoon alarm is uh, announced, the tourist path will be closed, so no one can go there. So there's two. Uh, there's a kind of benefit because if it's totally failure, there won't be have any tourists. If they, if, if we can uh, use this site to do scientific research, we can have a lot of uh, good data. So from this one is the 1957. It's the United States Air Force take these pictures after World War II. The United States Air Force take a lot of picture of Taiwan. This is one of them. So you can see this one here. Then the blue line is the existing land slide currently. And the other two is we suppose is the large scale land slide of this area. So we have a bigger uh, land slide uh, seen from 1957 images. So if we put that one here, where should we put the sensor? We don't know. If we put a lot of sensors, the rendering will cost a lot of money. So we use the TCD uh, inside in this area with our two image, and we can detect area where land slide is sliding down. So we can put GPS, we can put sensors at this area. So we put a lot of GPS, we have 10 more single frequency GPS. So we select this area, we put GPS, and also a reference GPS, assuming that moving. So also we have a drones for this time. We have a lot of optical images, also US LiDAR images. For the US LiDAR image, we have a nice quality. It's about uh, 300 point uh, square per square meter. So we, with the vegetation removed, we can get a very nice quality data. So from the nice quality data, we can see the features, geological formations. We can have a very nice scale, very uh, high resolution uh, geological map of this area. So also we can see this one is the uh, US LiDAR, and the remove, after the remove the vegetation, uh, good quality. And also this is the Airborne LiDAR. Airborne LiDAR should be enough, but compared with the US LiDAR, it's better, it's better. So we can see this one with airborne LiDAR. We can uh, find out the uh, laser scar. But the laser scar shoots enough. But we can be with the US LiDAR. We can see more details. It's the laser light. It's not only uh, this one here. It's only 10 hectares. But in the out 
current study, the land slide area is more than this one. It's more than 30 hectares. So with the US LIDAR and airborne LIDAR data, we can, we can uh, declassify uh, more details about the geological map. The left hand side is the current geological map. So with the airborne LIDAR and the US LIDAR, we can see the geological formation and the fissure and crest and even force of this area. But we can uh, do this one, but also we cannot just trust US LIDAR data. We need to go to the field to verify where is the fault or shear road. So we can go to the field, we can see that fault outcrop here and also fault plan in uh, this area. So with that geological formation with the US LIDAR and the field verification, we can have uh, 2D the geological profile. With the 2D geological profile, we can see that there is a shear road in this area. So the shear road complete from 40, 40 meters to 80 meters. So this is the signal where the shear road happened from geological investigation. So we need to focus on here or other places. So with that one US LIDAR, we also have a very nice regional uh, quality uh, geological map. So we can have a very good quality and see there is a fault across this desktop area. So also we have a core identification. So with the four cores, you can see that core five, uh, no, sorry, core four. Core number four is very extremely fractured. So it's extremely fractured, so we can assume that water will pass through core four. And the other is also very, uh, uh, very, very fractured, but uh, core four is more uh, fractured in this road. And also because this is the uh, only road pass through the Taiping Sun uh, Recreation Park. So the uh, Forest Bureau, they do a uh, retaining pile, the journey works at this, along this road. The pile length is about 40 meters, so it's protecting the slope, but the 40 meters is enough or not for this uh, large scale land slide we see. So with the core uh, borehole imagery, we can see that uh, all the uh, fissure cracks, because we, when we do the core hole identify, we cannot know where is the direction of fracture or fissures? So with the bottom image, we can conclude in that all the fissures toward the downslope. So the fissure and the geological formation is toward to the same direction of slope. So we at Tepish uh, monitoring system uh, set up uh, based on the funding from Soil and the Water Conservation Bureau. So we can have uh, this one. And uh, we have a, 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 a monitoring system like this one. Also, we can pick up any point of the monitoring instrument and compare, compare it to the uh, ground incentometer and the water label. So we can immediately know the, 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 the difference between each uh, 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 system. So the, the first one, we, as we, we mentioned, we have the ground monitoring, we put a GPS. This is a single frequency GPS data. So we can see that the, the GPS data is reference to number 10 station. So we can see the uh, east, the north, and the vertical uh, displacement. And the yellow line is, uh, is representing the precipitation uh, data, it's been rainfall. And the purple line is, uh, is earthquake. So not only uh, rainfall data or earthquake events, the, uh, the, the monitoring side will move. So we need to calibrate, or we need to know which one is controlling uh, the last scale line. So with the long term, it's, 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 I said long term is a four years data. With the four years data, you can see all the data toward is. So if you are familiar with Taiwan, Taiwan is under an earthquake or a plate intruding uh, area. So all the data should go to west or west uh, north uh, northwest. But the data shows east. It means that with the reference station, all the stations are sliding to down slope. So this one, it is another one we detect from ground surface. For the ground surface, we assume we mount the earthquake station and ground surface. And assuming the other underground is a density medium. So when the wave propagation from far end to the earthquake station, we can measure the shear wave density. So this one uses the shear wave density difference. The shear wave density difference. We can see the drop down of shear wave density difference. This one is the... Uh, 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 the, the one is LT01, it's detected by it's himself. So we can see that when the earthquake or rainfall even happens, the DVOV, the, color, the, the data, the, the value will drop down a little bit. So the other one is the same city. So we can see that uh, this one is compared with LT01 is here, LT05 is here. 01 is 
outside the existing next time. Zero five is near the crest of the existing next time. So we can see the difference. But the zero one can take more sin because it's a shallow next time under this. So if we have a dynamic uh, illustration like this one, you can see that all points become red when during the typhoon comes. When the typhoon comes, means one thing, the sliding happen. The other thing is ground water level raise. So with the two mechanism, we can see the difference of zero wave a very difference. So there's a, a study say that the total failure of the shear wave, the shear wave various velocity difference is seven percent. The total is total failure. But this one we detected here is only a zero point five percent. It's far away from the total failure. So we are not expecting the total failure, but we are studying. So this one is the uh, small conclusion from the earthquake station. From the earthquake station, we can see that the LT01 is uh, from their potential areas, including LT01 to LT08. And also, we can detect the sliding area, sliding trend is underneath about 100 meters. From there, another one is because we can detect the shear wave velocity difference. The, the velocity difference, the threshold for rainy is 200 meters. So, from the ground surface, we can detect the various of shear wave velocity difference is 200 meters. So, we see at least 200 meters. This idea, two meter for rainfall festival. So there's another one we put on the ground is ground water pressure. That uh, for earthquake, uh, for landslide, uh, we need two acceleration. The first one is rainfall, the other one is earthquake. earthquake. And for a rainfall event, we have a uh, water pressure, but we don't know it's confined or unconfined water pressure. So we put the uh, uh, optical fiber water pressure to uh, one hose, but there's a, tra a tragedy in 2017, the grass cutting, they cut the wires. So we don't have a temperature reading. We calibrate all the reading by temperature. So we can see that there is a difference uh, there. But the wind, unfortunately, uh, is underneath the groundwater. So it's, uh, we can assume the uh, temperature is quite stable. So we assume the uh, groundwater, groundwater. So we can see that this one is not calibrated with uh, temperature. But it still can detect the land side, uh, sorry, earthquake event in last year. And Last year with a hot earthquake. And this too is uh, calibrated with uh, temperature, so it can make, make nice data now. So the, the top one is 40 meter. The one is not like the bottom one too. So the one, the first one there is the uh, is, is ticket. The, the ticket is, means that it's unsaturated. For the bottom one is 50, 50 meter, 60 meter, they already saturated. So the pressure reflection from earthquake is very quickly. Uh, so we can see that with this one earthquake, the left hand side earthquake is bigger than the right hand side, we can see the increase of the warm water pressure. So we can measure that. Warm water pressure is more, much more important with the free surface warm water. You know that the, where the, the water will go, comes out when the landslide happens. So we also use the electric resistance window in field. So sorry with my poor uh, photo first photoshop. This is just assuming it's a window. It's uh, 100 meter by 100 meter by 100 meter. It's the dose shape. It's in the field. Usually we use the electric resistance once, then they take it away from. But this one is very in time. So we can measure every hour. Every hour, it's just every hour we can send the voltage to the voltage to the, the pulse. So we can measure every hour. But there's a, 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 a it's a pity. In this domain, we put the voltage every hour, and suddenly the lightning comes. So we we lose one uh, data local. So now we just use two hours. So every two hours we can have an uh, image of the electricity state. Okay. So this one we have a uh, good quality data, like this one is Typhoon Meiji. In the 2016, we can see that there's water in the bar, in the upper upside. So the blue side means the low electricity state, which means the water which means water. And the button, you see that it's another water. The why reducing the, in, introducing this result? As I mentioned, there's engineering work due by Forest Bureau. It's a 40 meter retaining pipes. It will block some water. So when you block water, the, the water separates to two parts, the upper part and the lower part. When the rainfall is big enough, so suddenly the two parts water is combined together. And when the rainfall is decreasing, the water goes away and it comes back to original condition. So we can use this one as a warning. So if the water comes together and the, the, the low distance becomes more area, so we can put an announce. This is uh, another way we do this. 
We use this one, but we also measure the electric field. Each pole of our electricity, we have an electric field. We, if you go back to see it, it's a light in positive. The, the horizontal side is uh, precipitation rainfall. When rainfall reach 100 millimeter, the electric field is positive. When it over 100 meter, it becomes negative. So, so we can conclude that for this system, 100 meter will reduce the groundwater change. So it will change to a totally failure. So it's a pre-warning if the groundwater change. So we want to discuss all the things together. So different time scale. We will use the uh, groundwater table, we will rainfall, we will use uh, this one. Uh, black line is the uh, imprint, uh, impress in current meter, and also GPS data, and also the earthquake station. We do it to compare everything. The yellow line is uh, every rainfall event, and the, the purple line is the earthquake event. So we can see that different kind of instrument can detect different uh, event. Not only uh, not only everything because you see the red uh, this one, the purple line one, the center one. Every every instrument also always detect this one. But for some kind, if if IPI is this one IPI detect, the other cannot detect. And also this one, you can see this another another case they detect and the other cannot detect. So the instrumentation is uh, the, the resolution is come to one meter or two millimeter. You need traditional geotechnical uh, sensors. If you need a, a bigger uh, or, or, or cheap or, or cost efficient way, you, you can use GPS or use uh, earthquake station. Also, this is another one case with uh, with two or three uh, events. And this is uh, this 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 uh, this year is a earthquake in uh, Hualien. It's not so uh, big. But in terms of volume, so the shake, the shake, the shake effect is very uh, tremendous in this area. So we can see that uh, with the GPS data, we measure four, five millimeter move of the lens time. And this is also a deformation of the uh, uh, used uh, with the Sentinel One. Because I have to confess, I have to confess that uh, this one, the coherence, is down to zero point zero five. It's quite low, so we can measure something. From here, so we can see uh, every time, every, every 12 days, the typhoon make a quick event. You can see the, uh, the our existing area, the landslide, is the deformation it comes, and also we can see the um, extensometer now the uh, is a domicile. Also, the man's tear acceleration change, and the SA deformation in uh, in this area happen. So we need to conclude everything to uh, pre warning system. So we do need to do some simulation. This is a 2D numerical simulation. We based on the, the ratio test, we get the cohesion, cohesion and the fusion angle. We consider the retaining pile. And we do this uh, simulation. This is a lower warm water table. It's the maximum shear strength. And with the high warm water table, we can simulate this uh, totally failure. This, uh, with this one, you can see that we have a small area that's like this outside the retaining wall. If we have a high one water level, the lens side will change to a totally failure, like this one. And the sliding depth is about 100 meters. Even the earthquake station detail like the lens side sliding plane, 90 to 110. So here about 100 meters, the sliding plane. So we can see that with the deformation, with the low one water level, and uh, with a uh, high groundwater water, we have a bigger uh, this deformation. And also we use the 3D uh, demo analysis. This one is not only for the uh, limit equilibrium analysis, also for the deformation analysis. The most important part is find the sliding depth of 3D. For with the slide 3D uh, uh, sliding depth, we put it to uh, a 3D runoff simulation. We know the sliding depth, we can put every particle to sliding down so we can Concluding the affected area of this large scale lens time. So, we also put the, everything to 3D perspective way so we can uh, very nice to introduce to local people. Also, we have community, we can see everything about this uh, lens time will happen. And uh, for, we, for this time, we, have, we, need, we have need the preliminary uh, lens time warning threshold. But unfortunately, it's in the past four years, our monitoring, you can reach the right hand side. The red dot means the precipitation, the rainfall, larger than 500 millimeter. The yellow dot is 200 millimeter. Compared
compare with other studies, quite slow in the past four years. For if we have 10 years compared with the Lusaka experience, in the past 10 years, we have four events, large event, 1,000 millimeter. With the rainfall large than 1,000 millimeter, we can have a lot of strategies for the landslide warning system. So here we just give some preliminary results. The first one is deformation. The deformation for engineering works, we set up 2 millimeter per day or 2 meter per month. If we set up this one, so it's on the surface and also on the ground. So for the surface and underground, we will induce in two different kinds of rainfall. So we go through the presentation. For the ground surface deformation, it comes to 300 millimeter. The ground surface means that for the reason the people, they cross the road, they see the cracks. Okay, the next one is 800 to 1,000 uh, millimeter for underground deformation. The, uh, the, the last scale next time needs larger rainfall to trigger. So to, in order to trigger 100 meter slightly plan, we need the more precipitation. For the Lusa experience, we now set up to 800 to 1,000. And the other one is GPS data. We already have four years GPS data. From the GPS data, we can separate two groups. And for the rainfall, largely 500 millimeter, we see the GPS group. So we set up GPS uh, threshold as uh, 500 millimeter. And also the groundwater table. We measured the groundwater table about two years, but it's still at uh, 22 or 220. We have, with the rainfall, if we, we monitor rainfall to 500, the groundwater table still cannot uh, go too high. The uh, problem may be because the fresh part or underneath, when we uh, dig a hole, there is a fresh uh, rocks. So we, we uh, need to put the water into the hole. The, the water will flush away very quickly. So uh, groundwater table is uh, probably we are waiting the groundwater race in uh, another event. So this is my last slide. This is all my copious uh, pictures. And especially we have a couple of uh, copious here. So if you have questions, you can ask them because I just present here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Wang.